Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's everybody come up. We'll start service. Choir. Sing. Prayer requests. No, come on up.
Christian in the Bailey. Pray for Father tonight. Right. That's 
That's right. Uh, I have some good preaching, I have some good teaching, but I'm really excited to hear my brother preach tonight. Amen. Pray for me, you know, one day after a while when I go with the man without a vision, you know, the parish, my vision is hearing them words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. Holy. Yeah. If my family don't want to go, I'm still going on. Amen. I'm just trying to live my life to uh, think to see Christ in the Right. Amen. Brother, brother. That's right. Amen. Lord. Did one ask? Brother Tom, I want to say love the Lord tonight. I just want to give God the praise and thank you for all the days. I fall short a lot of times, but give you praise. I just I've got so much to be thankful for. Each day of life, like I said, he's he's placed me and my family abundant way. He's always provided everything we've ever needed. But most of all, the greatest need I have in my life is for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I want God to be first in my life. Just pray for me that I'll keep pressing towards you, Mark, and just keep my eyes upon God and not on the things of this world. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Sure. Anyone else? I've got some honey I'd like to try. I'd like to y'all to pray for me that I'd ever be able to do what God would have me to do. Amen. And uh, the Lord, <coughs> I love this old song. Me and we used to do this here in the church a lot. So I just want to say that I love the Lord and I thank God for being here tonight. That's the Lord. 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 That's the Lord.
church, this old country church. Yeah. 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 That's phenomenal. Of, yeah. I remember when General Lee sat right there in the corner. Yeah. Mr. Brown, he, he finally got his prayer request. Yeah. He always wanted to go to see his mommy. His mommy had already passed and went to heaven. I believe he's with his mommy now. Yeah. Sometimes don't you wonder if he's just a child and is she his mother? But just having fun. Or if both of them grow to even know each other. Time, whatever it is, it's going to be a lot better than the other. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is anyone got a testimony? If we only know what the Lord done for us, we would be on our knees continuously thanking Him. Amen. For He woke us up and He fed us. He sheltered us from the snow last night and the rain Amen. and the wind. Amen. Praise the Lord. I give you a good bed to sleep in. There's a lot of people sleeping under on the streets and under bridges and stuff like that tonight. Some of them, most of them choose to sleep in, but some don't. Yeah. Mark, oh, will you do the song in the sandals? I don't know who's talking. I don't know. Well, that's your Lord. That's your Lord. There are the sandals they took from his feet.
works three jobs, she's barely getting by. Bob got word his mom's been told it's cancer. So many questions, and all of them ask why. We're living in a broken world, a broken world won't give you any answer.
This morning, Dave Agin said something to me that I want to relate to you guys or share it with you. Before he left, he said, when you come tonight, wear your Sunday best. He was referring to, he's going to be videotaped. Wear your best. Unknowingly, he gave me a thought for a text. Uh, I, I guess most preachers are like this. You hear certain little catchphrases and you automatically start tying it into the spiritual realm of things. Sadly, in this world today, uh, many, many church members wear their Sunday best on Sunday. And then on Monday, they take it off. Very sad. It is. But it's also very true, and it's nothing new. During the days of Jesus, they were also men and women that proclaimed or professed that He told them that they were hypocrites and that their hearts were far from God. Now, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to preach on that tonight because God, God has led me to the book of Psalms. If you want to turn there, the first chapter of the book of Psalms. And I haven't preached on this in a long time. But as I was doing my study today, this is where the Lord led me, so I'm going to share it with you. They end six verses, so let me read all six of them too. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They're not going to stand with us. They will stand in a white throne judgment. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You may be seated. There's a couple of places that I hope that the Lord will allow me to go to tonight and share with you. But keep this thought in your mind, if you would, please. Two men, two ways, two destinations. And the thought that I want you to keep in your mind is the saved man and the sinner man. The saved man and the sinner man. Two men, two ways, and two destinations. When David of old wrote this particular chapter, I don't know if he uh, knew it was going to come down 2,000 years later and touch the hearts of the church world today. But I have read this and spoke on it and studied on it, I guess for 10 to 15 years at least, and it's always blessed my heart when I begin to read, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. There are folks in the world today that they do as their friends do. They follow after what someone else does. And it oftentimes gets them in trouble. I was that man at one point in my life. Whatever my friends wanted to do, that's what we went out and done. But thank God one night there was a man from Galilee introduced himself to me to an old-fashioned preacher, and I began to follow him. I'm not walking in the counsel of the ungodly no more. I'm not standing in the way that sinners stand in, and I'm not sitting in the seats of the scornful. My destination and my home is not of this world, but it's in heaven. I believe that Jesus said to His disciples one time, He said, lay not your treasures up on this earth where thieves can break through and steal and the moth can eat it or rust can corrupt it. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where the thieves cannot break through and steal it. Tonight while we're sitting here at this church 
somebody might be going through some of our personal belongings at our house. The thieves can break through and they can steal. My daddy told me one time, and I, I found it to be the truth, you cannot keep a thief out. If he wants in, he'll find a way to get in. And I found that to be the truth down through the years that I, I've dwelt in, especially the old house I'm in now. Dead bolts and locks and the bars that go up against the doors, the kick bars, all that's in place. But one day, I'm going to tell you this is kind of comical. One day I had all this stuff locked up and had that bar against the doorknobs from the inside, except for that one door. And when I got back, I discovered that. And I found out that it was my grandson, Brandon, had showed up after Jen and I went to uh, Walmart for a few hours. And he went through the bathroom window, which is about that tall, and probably opens about that wide. He climbed up on the side of my house and slid that window open and crawled through there and got himself something to eat. That's all he wanted. When, he, when I found out who it was, I confronted him and I said, why did you do that? He said, Papa, I was hungry. I said, but the door was locked. That meant stay out. <laughs> that, that didn't mean climb through a window. And so he, he learned from that that, well, anyway... I cut me a stick about that long and I laid it in the track of the window. He can't get in there no more. Unless he breaks it out. But, but I said that to say this. If somebody wants in, they're going to get in. They're going to get in. No matter what we do or try to prevent it, they're going to get in. But blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I don't follow after the world any longer. I follow after the Spirit. Now this flesh is world. Come on, y'all think about that for a minute. This flesh is world. If you follow after the flesh, you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Because this flesh, now listen to this, real close. This flesh is enmity against God. It always has been and it always will be. The Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, when I would do good, evil is always present. Now, you and I have experienced this in our Christian life. When we would do good, there's always something of the flesh that tries to hinder us from doing what we know we need to be doing or what the Spirit has laid on our hearts to do. We're walking in the counsel of the flesh and not the counsel of the Holy Ghost. I'm just checking to see if you're still with me. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Now, where is our delight today? Is there a delight in the flesh or is it in the law of the Lord? And in His law doth He meditate day and night. How many knows what the first rule or law of God is? Now, don't, don't think of the Ten Commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. And do all the rest. I'm telling you, the rest of this will fall easy if you have that love. It will fall easy. You'll be able to forgive. You won't want to steal. You won't want to lie. You don't want to do all these other things that the commandments covered in, in the Mosaic law. You won't want to do none of those things if you love God more than you love yourself. We have to love Him and put Him first. Amen. Now, our delight should be in the law of the Lord. Now if we do this and our delight is there, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. I, I've noticed behind my house there's a little drain that comes out and it's been there, I don't know how long, but ever since I've lived up there, that little drain has been behind the house. And when I first moved in the old house and began to remodel after my dad had... Uh, Kind of moved out of it and said, you can have it. I'm tired of working on it. But anyway, I went up on that little bank where that water was, and there were some little trees up there that I wanted to get rid of. I wanted to clear that off like most people do behind their house. They'll clear a little landing behind there. And I dug down to the roots of those little trees, and it was as if my uh, mattock or the axe was hitting against iron. It was petrified. The water had hardened that root of that tree so hard 
that I couldn't cut it loose. It's still there. Even little roots like that are hard to break through. I said that so you would understand. He said we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Yeah. The trees that are by the waters are rooted and they're very hard to move. So the other ones on up the way, I had no problem with them. I, some of them I pulled up by hand because they didn't have much root to them. But these trees that were by that water were founded in there and they were grounded so heavily that I couldn't hardly even cut them out of there. Now, the ungodly are not so. How about the un ungodly of this world? Are they tossed about with every wind that comes along? Yeah. Every little thing that comes along, they're tossed about. Now, I want you to know something. There are people that are sitting in high places tonight that are wicked people. And I know your minds automatically went to the governments of our, our countries, but that is very true. But what about in our spiritual world? Is there wickedness in the spiritual world? There's, there's spiritually, there are wicked men that are over some of the biggest churches in the world. I listened to a couple of programs today, and I'm not going to call no names. It wasn't foul. I around the name <laughs> but this one fella, the entire time I listened to his program, the only thing I heard him say was how much he had found it and what great work he did. And he finally just come right out and said, I believe our church is the greatest church in the world. Well, we all should feel that way about the church. But what he was saying was he feels like his church is the greatest church of all. Now, I want you to know something. We may be small in number. We don't have the 144,000 yet. They're coming. We don't have that in a congregation. But we've got a church that we're a part of that's the greatest church in the world, and that's the church of Jesus Christ. From this part, I'll be in my church. He wasn't talking about Peter. He wasn't talking about that evangelist that, that automatically the he said the go, uh, people that were governing the state where he's in heard he was looking for some property and just brought him in there and said, we're going to let you have this so cheap you'll think you stole it. See, it wasn't like that. Jesus came down here and he gave a great price for the church. Amen. He gave his blood. He shed his blood. They said they took him to the cross. They said they nailed him to the cross. They said they killed him. He walked up Calvary's mountain bearing that cross knowing what he was going to go through and he gave himself for me and you. He died that I might live. He died that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus didn't have to die. He died because the Father loved me and you and he came into this world to be the supreme sacrifice once and for all for the sins of the world. They evangelists can't take away my sins. The Baptists can't take away my sins. No other denominational sect of religion can cannot take away my sins. It took the blood of Jesus. Amen. And it didn't cost me nothing. Right, amen. Except the world. I hope you got that. You have to come out from among them. And be a separate people. So that the world, when they see you, will know they're seeing Christ. Yeah. I wish somebody could hear that. Praise the Lord. So when the world looks at you, they're looking at Christ. Amen. They're seeing the glory of God. They're seeing the Holy Spirit. They're seeing a child of the living God tonight. Amen. They're not seeing somebody that's sitting there in the flesh and all the time grumbling and complaining. I might as well just preach it the way God's given us. He, we don't need to show the world their infirmities, their faults, their shortcomings. We need to show them Jesus. No matter what the Holy Spirit
20 times in a row. And his congregation just stood up. They just kept getting up and shouting, praising God, praising God. And the next thing you know, that church was turned loose and everybody in the building just about was on their feet shouting. And I'm going to tell you what the adversary says. If I tell you, stand up and shout, God's got something for you, you'll say, ain't nobody going to tell me to shout. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing the devil will say. Yeah. Who does he think he is? I ain't going to shout unless the Holy Ghost gets a hold of me. The Holy Ghost ain't going to grab you and make you shout. It will come into your heart. It will stir you up. It will quicken you. It will make you alive. But it's up to you to get on your feet. Amen.
It said, Paul stood up and beckoned him with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, listen. Lord, listen up. Let me tell you something. Yep. You that fear God. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as sojourners or strangers in the land of Egypt and with a high arm brought them out of it. We all know the story about when they left captivity in Egypt after being there for 40 years. God with a strong arm led them out. And about the time of 40 years before their manners in the wilderness, when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by law. And we know he drove out the uh, parasites, the uh, Hittites, and I can't pronounce them all. There are so many different ones. But there are seven nations. He drove them out and he said, I'm giving you this land. After that, he gave unto them judges for the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And after they desired, and they desired a king, and God gave them, or allowed them to have Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. When he had removed him, he raised up unto them David, and this is where the, the preacher wanted to get to. And he raised up to them David to be their king, to whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. Now Jesus came through the lineage of David. He came through the lineage of David. David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. It didn't say David never made any mistakes. It didn't say David never sinned. It didn't say he never fell. It said David was a man after God's own heart. Now we should be men and women after God's own heart today. Yeah. What is God's heart? What is His will? Let me put it that way. What is the will of God? There it is. That we should all come to repentance. It was not God's will for any to perish, but all should come to repentance. So should it be in our heart that all should come to repentance? I know we want to see our son saved. We want to see our husband saved. We want to see our daughter, their wife, etc., etc., etc. But do you want to see that addict out on the street get saved? Yes. You want to see that drunkard get saved? You want to see that woman broke in your house and soaked him in the chair? You want to see them saved? God does. And we have to have that heart in us if we get to heaven. Now let me tell you something. It gets very, very difficult to forgive people that done these things to you. It does. It gets difficult. But as Jim told me a lot of times, she corrects me a whole lot. You guys don't know what I go to. She said, if you get to heaven, you got to forgive. Because every now and then, the past will come up and I'll say, you remember when that little rascal stole off me? Hey, you got to forgive me. That wasn't your parasol, was it? <laughs> Just a little humor. <laughs> With my money? So see, it don't stop. It goes on and on. Right? Okay. But we do have to forgive. We have to forgive those that despite the uses, persecute us, and say all men are of evil against you. You remember when the statue got shot out here and yeah. Terry Klein, WSAZ News, come up here. And she brought me in here. I was sitting right here, or she was one, I was over there. I believe I was over there and she was here. And I quoted that to her. She said, well, where is that in the Bible? And my mind went blank. <laughs> I know it's Matthew chapter 5, but I couldn't even think. When she asked me that question so quick and so directly, I froze. Uh, I'll look it up. The field's rolling. You ain't got time to look nothing up. If you're going to quote it, no. So I memorized that. And Jesus was talking to his disciples. Forgive those. Pray for them. And so go and you eat coast fire on your head. The, the other day, I, I got up in the attic of my building, and I found a box in there, and it had a bunch of newspapers in it. And one of the newspapers was that story on the statue. And all that comes flooding back to me. Boy, what a lesson I learned. I, I thought about her sitting there saying, Where, where's that at in the Bible? And I thought, oh my God, I let you down, Lord, I'm sorry. But I know where it's at now. I wish she could do over, you know, come yeah, about. No. no, ain't no do over. You got enough. So, 
Are you willing to do that? Are we willing to forgive those? There's haters out there. There's people that don't like me. I know that. I know. It don't matter. As long as I know God loves me, I'm all right. There you go. I'm going to make it. I'm going to hang on to God's unchanging hand. And I'm going to tell you something. These folks that don't like me, I'll shake their hand and hug their neck. Whether they want me to or not, I will. If I try to shake their hand and they withdraw and walk away, I'm clear. So it's on them. It's on them. Because I've done what a Christian is supposed, is supposed to do. Yet I read all that to you. Let me read you something else here real quick. Then we'll hush. Get out of the way. After they desired a king, and God gave them Saul. Alright? Then it said that he, he removed him and raised up David to be their king. Now David was a man after God's own heart. And of this man's seed, God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Now this is Paul teaching to the, to the leaders of the church because they were finding fault. If you read the whole chapter on, right before that, they had cast out a, 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 a demon spirit out of a what they call this guy, a soothsayer. Yeah. And, and a sorcerer, there he is, in, in verse 6 over here. It said he was a sorcerer, and he was a false prophet. And they were trying to preach and teach to the deputy of the country, and he was interfered by his sorcery. And Paul cast that demon out of him. You gotta go. You're in the way. You gotta go. And so, here he is saying that God raised up a Savior, Jesus Christ. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, John fulfilled his course when he said, Who think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes, the, who, the shoes of whose feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear of God. To you is the word of this salvation sent. I like that whosoever part of that. Yeah. Amen. Now you got to remember the day that he was preaching this. The Jews were standing there. The Gentiles were standing there. And here is here is our, our, our brother Paul saying, and you, you men and brethren, you children of the stock of Abraham, which was the church, and whosoever among you feared God. That was very bold of him. Yeah. Whosoever among you feared God. The word of the salvation of God is sent to you. I'm glad that one night at an old-fashioned altar the salvation word was preached to me and I heeded the call. Amen. Aren't you glad that you heard the salvation call of Jesus Christ? Because salvation is deliverance from sin. Y'all right. yeah. think about that for a minute. Deliverance from sin. Not going to the altar and praying a, a two-minute dried-up prayer and going back to your sin. That's not salvation. Salvation delivers you from your sin. Amen. It brings you out of darkness Amen. into His marvelous light. It delivers us. And I'll tell you something else that the Holy Spirit will do for you. It will keep you from sin. Amen. Mistakes you will make. Shortcomings you will have. Failures we all got. But He will keep you from the sin of this world. Oh, Lord have mercy. This, this goes a little bit longer. I'm, I'm going to jump over here to verse 39, or 30, 38 and 39, and read it to you in us. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. This man. What man is he talking about? Jesus. Jesus. Say that again. Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. Be it known unto you, men and brethren, that through this man Jesus has preached the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. How many knows what the law of Moses required of the church? Besides the Ten Commandments. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifices were all one together. Once a year, they had to offer a lamb. Yeah. The blood of that lamb covered their sins. 
from one year. This was the nation of Israel. Every year, over and over and over. And that, of course, there was turtle doves and different things for different types of sin that they had to offer them through that year. But every year they had to offer a lamb for the sacrifice of their sin. That blood of the lamb was representation of the blood of the Lamb of God that would come and take away the sins of the world and be our Lamb, our sacrifice, once and for all. Amen. Once and for all. Our sins are gone. Our sins are forgiven. Our chains are broken. We are set free by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that came from Calvary. Amen. We're set free. Old John began to weep, didn't he? John the Revelator said, Who is able, who is worthy to break those seals and to open that book? I began to weep bitterly. Heaven was searched, earth was searched, beneath there, nobody was found worthy. Oh my God, what are we going to do? And an angel said, Weep not, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb, had prevailed to break those seals and open the book. Amen. Jesus Christ is who he was talking about. Amen. He had prevailed. You remember in the play, they, they portrayed Jesus going down and taking the keys away from the devil? And that's exactly what he did. He took the keys of death, hell, and the judgment away from Satan. Now the life is in Christ today. Amen. He has no dominion over us. If you let Him have dominion over you, you're a servant to whom you obey. Amen. Amen. Let me say that one more time. If you let Satan have dominion over you, you are a servant. A servant. A servant. A servant does the will of the Master. You are a servant to whom you obey. Amen. Amen. Preacher, I'm a Christian. Are you obeying God? Are we obeying God? Are we a servant to God? Are, are we a servant to the devil? How many believes that? And I, I'm probably going to get in trouble right here. I've been in trouble before. Bless you, Lord. How many believes that you really need to go to church? You believe you really need to go to church? Yeah. I heard Stephanie's testimony said she believes she needs to go to church. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm going to change the words. Straight up. If I laid out a church, and I've been in this thing for 48 years, mm -hmm. if I laid out a church, let's say for a month or two months, I know without any doubt in my mind that I begin to slide back. The next thing you know, I wouldn't want to go to church. I conceive in my heart and in my mind that I'm just as good as you are. You get to heaven, I'm just going to be no better than me. Because the adversary, you remember when he came to Eve? i, I got to say this before I move on. Remember when he came to Eve over in Genesis? The Bible said he was the most cunning of all the creatures. Slithery, sneaky snake. That's what he took it from us. He was the most cunning and crafty of all the creatures. And he came to Eve and he said, Hey, what man are you doing? Let me talk to a woman. I can't believe I'll talk to you today. God knows the day that you eat of that tree in the middle of the garden, your eyes are going to be open and you'll be like God. You'll have the powers of God. You'll be like God. You'll be as He is. And Eve thought, oh, it's pretty good to you. Yeah. Everybody, everybody desires power. Everybody wants to be on top of the world. So she reached over and she got in that fruit and she did. Was her eyes open then? No. You know that she knew that it was sin. She knew that not to do that because God had told her not to. 
She rich it to her husband. <laughs> she read it over to her husband and said, you know, this stuff's pretty good. Try this. And they took it to eat it. And then they made it. Their eyes were open. Their eyes were open. They looked at each other for the first time with shame, with sin, and knew they were naked. And they run and they hid themselves. You ever seen anybody that you catch them off guard and they go, oh my God, not my bad for a while. Or something like that. I, I, I love watching old gun smoke. Uh, old, old Festus was in there one time. He was getting ready to take him a bath. And he just took his shirt off and he had them big old long jaws on. And somebody opened the door and he said, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> he had more clothes on than a lot of this generation even seen. <laughs> but, but he was still embarrassed. Our people's not embarrassed over nothing today. No, they're, not. they're not. It's truth. And then, oh God. <laughs> and then they'll wear these clothes, and if a man looks, you know, they, they go to the law and say, he's eyeballing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cover it up. Yeah. People won't look. That's the only solution I know to you. Let me get back to this. Their eyes were open, they knew they were naked. And God, the Bible said God came walking in the coolness of the Lord, in the coolness of Eden. And he knew where Adam was. He knew what had happened. But he was giving Adam a chance to repent. He said, Adam, Adam, where are they? Adam, where are they? Picked his head out from under a bush. Here, Lord. Here, my Lord. He said, Adam, have you done what I told you not to do? He said, the woman. The woman. The woman. The woman. I don't know how many married couples in here play the blame game like me and Jen does, but everything's my fault. <laughs> What's that? It's all about your fault. And every chance I get, I try to blame her or something. Don't go the way they're supposed to go. But this is the game that was going on between Adam and Eve. The woman you gave me, she ate. Now I'm going to confess that he, she gave it to me. And Lord, yeah, I, I ate it. That's confession. And he killed an animal. The first blood sacrifice. Kevin posted this the other day. The first sacrifice of blood. God made that sacrifice. And he took the skins and he made them clothes out of it. And you know the rest of the story, that brought us up to where we are today. Now here's the, I guess the, the happy ending. Soon and very soon, the Lord is going to descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. And he's going to declare, dead in Christ come forth. And those that are in the grave are going to come forth. I don't care how long he's been gone. My mom's been gone for 45 years. She's going to come out of that grave. Yeah. That body's laying down there at four long, but her spirit and soul is in heaven with God. Amen. It's not suffering no more. It don't have cancer no more. Yeah. And when they come back in the clouds, they're going to be reunited with that body, and yeah. it's going to be changed and glorified like it under the Son of God in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and we are going to be changed and raised up together with them to meet the Lord in the earth. Amen. Amen. So, shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comforting words. Just goodbye for a season. Man, let me tell you, reunion time is right around the corner. Woo! I didn't know I knew your mom because I used to hang out with Mike Spotter at Chuck Barrett Maisel's house. And I didn't know that was your mom's sister until you told me. So I know I met her. I hung up there almost as much as I hung at the house. What a reunion! What, what a reunion! We can't imagine! Can't imagine! I used to have dreams every now and then of my mom, because you don't, you don't quit missing your mom. You don't quit missing your dad. You don't quit missing little brothers and little sisters and big brothers and sisters. You don't quit missing them. You just learn to go day by day and get by. Because we have that hope within us that there is a reunion. 
But I used to have this, this little dream sometimes. I'd dream it wide awake. Of going to heaven. The rapture happening and going into the heavens and seeing my mother running down the streets. Because I saw her run the aisles here in Lundell. She'd take those spells. Y'all y'all think Kevin was something else not. And the Lord had mercy. She'd take them little running spells. She wasn't a five foot two. And she'd run up and down these aisles. She'd come down Christ Church one time when I was pastoring down there and biking down with singing. And she took, I think it might have been the last service she was in before she got sick, but she took a running spell down there. And I had that on, on a cassette tape. You could hear her shouting, praising God. And I loaned it to one of the family members and I never got it back. But anyways, I used to dream about her running down the streets that were pure goat. Pure goat. A shouting and praising God. And let me tell you, she didn't have a wrinkle in her face. Her hair was jet black. Just like it was when she was growing up. And she was healthy, energetic. There, there, there was a, a, a little old uh, tire. Well, my mommy liked the yard sales. I got skin after, so we're, we're all right, right? She liked yard sales. And right down here where Doc Allen and them used to live, they stopped at a yard sale one time, and somebody took a picture of her and uh, Bertha over there, and she was asking Bertha about items. And she liked to Jew the price a little bit, too. That's part of the game, right? That's part of the game. So she, she was over at that yard sale. But one day I led her out, and I, I don't remember where we was at on that one, but I led her out, and they had a bunch of stuff sitting on tables, and a little old field, probably from here to Nathan at least, that she had to go through to get to that person's house. And she took off running. She run that field. And I I remember just, just laughing and enjoying that so much because she was so happy to do that. Yeah, that she didn't she didn't need the stuff, you know, most of it, but she just liked doing it. And I see her coming down the streets of glory, a running. And Jesus is standing there. Now this is my vision. You, you guys have your own vision. This is mine. And Jesus is standing there and he reaches over and he gets me by the hand and he says, there she is. Because he knows how our hearts have longed after him. Yeah. Especially our mother. Our mother was there when daddy couldn't be. It wasn't his fault. He worked. It wasn't his fault. But she kissed all the boo-boos away. She mended the first puppy love broken heart I ever had. She mended that. More fish in the sea, son. It was meant to be she wouldn't went out on you. Just don't worry about it. The right one's coming along. I just had that perfect advice, you know. Yeah. And anything she said was golden to me. Anything. But just this Jesus Paul was preaching about. He told those Pharisees. He said, This same Jesus that you took and you nailed to the old river cross has become Lord and Master over all. He has become supreme sacrifice. He has become the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You took him, and with wicked hands you crucified him. What did they do to old Peter and them? And Paul, well, well, they beat him. Forty strikes. Save one. That's 39 strikes. They put him in prison. They locked him up. You know what they did one time? And, and three times I said, I'm going to hush, so I'm going to have to do it, I guess. <laughs> they throw them into the inner prison which is down where the sewer runs. They had ditches underneath the prisons that the sewer ran through. So they throw them down in there where the sewer was, in the inner prison. And, 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 and they didn't sit there and say, woe is me, me oh my, what are we going to do? They said, let's have prayer meeting. Yeah. What do you say? And they began to sing and shout and praise God and the doors flew open and they walked out. Amen. That's my Jesus. He'll do that for you. He'll do that for you when you can't see no way. Sing and shout. When your finances seem like you ain't got enough money at the end of the month, praise God. Shout, sing, glorify Him. Watch Him make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Amen. I'm done. I hope you got something out of it. Let's go. Praise <laughs> Tuesday being the Lord's will, Brother Kevin will be preaching. And uh, next Sunday, Brother Al will be preaching being the Lord's will. And the church don't rise. If the church rises, I'll see you in the rapture. Okay?
You want to make the announcements about the little kids thing you're having? Okay. All right. On he, he said this morning on the eighth or something they're having a oh, Christmas thing out here for the Chalcoms. Yeah, we we'll have, we'll have a little Christmas party like we do at Valentine's parties. Uh, it's a big Christmas party for the kids out there, <laughs> out there for Sunday school. <laughs> December 11th. And the Gideon will be here that same day. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, it would tickle me to death. It would tickle Kevin to death if you haven't been bringing your children, if you'd start bringing them. And if you choose that Sunday to bring them, I promise you they'll be loved and welcomed just as much as one that's been here all year. Amen. Go ahead and bring them. Amen. Get them started. Let them know. We need to go to church. We need to learn about Jesus. Amen. Teach me the story of Jesus. I'm so glad my mommy took me to church. There was no arguing on Sundays. You didn't say, I don't feel like going, I ain't going. You went. It was understood. Get up, get ready. Yes, it was understood. You was going. Yep. Ain't no arguing about it. So we didn't even bother to argue. You know, would have done no good no way. You're going. All right. I love the Lord, and I'm, I'm glad for everyone to come out tonight. Uh, I appreciate you. The church appreciates you most all. God appreciates you. Right. Ma'am? Christmas dinner is the 10th. Dinner is the 10th? Yes. And then the food baskets, we leave 9 o'clock. Uh, we have a little bit of food baskets. Yeah. And then the food baskets will be delivered to the Do you know when you're going to do that? 16th. On the 16th, they yeah, will be going out six, Christmas caroling. And uh, so anybody wants to go can go with you, right? Yeah. Anybody wants to go can go with her. Uh, so if you just talk to somebody from the ladies up to her, and I'm glad you guys are doing that. And, and while <laughs> some of you's here, let me brag on you. During the funeral services that we had here the other day, you outdid yourselves. I'm telling you, I was so proud to be your pastor. You guys rock, I'm telling you. I don't know any other way to put it if you made me proud. Uh, I mean, them people could not believe at Edith's service. They could not believe how well they were treated, how you guys waited on them, handing food out there. And there was so much food, I don't know where all of them went. They bound up took it home, but, but there was so much food. That, I mean, it was just amazing. It was amazing. It really was. And it made that family feel so welcome. So warm. So I want to thank you on their behalf and on my behalf also for what you did. All right, and don't forget your food pantry. There, there's been a few I think brought some stuff here recently. But if you got uh, extra canned food, you go to the store, you want to get something extra. Let's get our food pantry built back up. If you got monetary donations to make, uh, Sister Jamie or, or Sister Sharon, either one, or any member of the Lady Thought Hillary. We'll accept it and see to it that it gets where you want it to go. Okay? All right. My hearts and minds are clear then. Can I put my wash back on Joey? All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he told me one day, he said, I need to take that thing off and see it's all up there. You know, that's, that's a bad to say. You know? All right. Let's all reference the Lord then. Let's see if brother. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, for another meeting here. And thank you, Lord, for your word that we can take and spread it, Lord, and be a light to someone. Lord, thank you for this meeting, Lord, that we can carry it out and spread it. Lord, yes. just watch over each and every one as we go and lead us back at the next point in time. We do the same prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother.